sure people are interested, like what DAW do you use? I use Ableton and I use Reason, depending on the genre that I'm producing. So if I'm making hip hop, I'm on Reason. If I'm making like pop or anything else, or even just editing or, you know, I do all my arrangement in Ableton. So a bit of both. And now that you can use the rack inside Ableton, because all my sound design stuff I do in Reason, you know, I'm able to use all the Reason plugins inside Ableton. It's like incredible. It's like the best of both worlds. So I was telling you last night, when I first started out getting into MIDI, I used to do my stuff in Cool Edit. And then I learned, oh, I can use MIDI and it'll make things way easier. That's when I got into Reason 2.5 and then eventually Reason 3.0 back in like 03. It's wild how far Reason has come because I stopped using it because we couldn't put in our own VSTs. I just find that now that there is VST support in it and everything, I definitely want to get back into it using it as a rack and everything. It's incredible. Like the rack extensions and the stuff that you can get on their platform that you can't get anywhere else. Like there are some definite like cheat codes for sure. And even like the stuff that they have, like their native plugins, like the Scream 4, Pulverizer, all that stuff, like to be able to use that in Ableton is pretty insane. You can color your sound with all those different devices in a Whoa. way that there's nothing in Ableton that matches that. Like even Sound Toys or any of these other, I feel like Scream 4 is like the first of its kind in terms of like a saturator, a distortion plug-in, all those different things. And the EQ is amazing. That's like the reason secret weapon to me is like Scream 4 and like Pulverizer. I haven't tried Pulverizer, but I did see Scream 4. I'm definitely gonna have to mess with that. It has like a soft clipper, saturator. Yeah, yep. Okay. And it has different settings. It was like the first to have like a lot of tape saturation, that kind of thing. And like I use it on my snares, I use it on kicks, definitely use it on samples. I mean, it's great for coloring sound and adding texture. Like, I feel like you can add a lot of texture. That's why like, even the samples that you're playing, a lot of those are like a combination of Reason and Ableton. And I think I even use Serato Studio on one of them too, because you can make really dope samples in Serato Studio. But just using the Green 4 on top of it as like another texture, it definitely gives you another layer that, you know, just makes it stick out a little bit more. Man, I can't wait till this pandemic is over. So. I mean, we could just kick it and trade exactly. tips, man. I mean, I just know there's so much shit that I wouldn't want to see what your workflow is with all these tools. And I'd show you some of my stuff I do. Exactly. Like, especially with Ableton, because I feel like I'm always tweaking my template and I'm always trying to find a better way to, you know, to just get into it. But I've been kind of stuck. So I always like curious to see how you do it, because I feel like your workflow is you're like Mr. Workflow. Like you always have like yeah. a new way of approaching making beats, so I definitely, I can't wait till this is over, <laughs> like for real. <laughs> Same, man. Like I was saying last night, Shortcut Buddy. Oh yeah. That plugin is crazy. I talked about it on my stream. I saw it from, what was his name? Billboard, you know, Billboard Matt, the producer. I saw it on his stream and I was like, what is that? He talked about it, it's a Max for Live plugin and I have it set up so like if I wanna load up Operator, I just hit Shift O and it loads up an operator. So shift is the modifier for like any plugin. And if I want to load up like the glue compressor, I hit G. Yeah, it's- I need that, I need that for sure. Yeah, man. In my workflow, for sure. That's crazy. Yeah, man. When I started becoming familiar with your production, it was around the time that detox was rumored. And the way that I heard your sound and just how it caught my ear and gave me chills, I was just like, yo, this is, wild can you tell us a little more about your experience working on detox and like what was that time like oh my god i mean that started when i first signed with dre you know i remember he was finishing get rich or die trying i think he was mixing and i remember sitting in the studio with him and he was i forgot which song he was mixing but i remember he played in the club he had just finished that finished mixing it i was making beats on the asr 10 at that point Crazy. And so he was super into what I was doing because it was just a unique sound. Because I feel like my sound is like a blend of like East Coast and West Coast. So it's like Pete Rock is one of my favorite producers and like Dre. So if you look to like Pete Rock and Dre, that was kind of like my sound, especially back then. That was like my, those are my two heroes. So, and then obviously Dilla. So, you know, it was just a combination of those things. And then like, that was when he first started talking about detox. And then as he started working on it kind of, you know, it was like kind of forming in his mind. And, you know, obviously he had a staff of producers and I was kind of like the new guy 
I mean, it, it was just surreal because it's like, you know, you're watching a master like put together records, you know, I'm bringing in beats. I remember at that point I was making like eight to 10 beats a day. And I was just, you know, I slowly just, I started getting better. And I just remember getting to a point where it was just like, I was in such a work mode. I was like waking up at like five, six in the morning, just like making beats until 12, literally. And then I was so confident I was going in the studio and like, it got to a point where I would walk in the studio and Dre would like stop what he was doing. Even if he was recording a song, he would stop and be like, okay, what are you about to play? Cause I know you're about to kill the room or whatever. So it got to that point where, you know, I was just bringing a new sound that he was kind of, it just caught his ear, you know what I mean? Like, and it was just sticking for whatever reason. And, you know, I was bringing these new sounds, you know, I buy a lot of like analog keyboards at that time. And like, and I was using Reason, you know, when I made that transition, I just, I felt like I had more control over what I was putting in my music. And I was putting on these weird sweeps and like laser, you know what I mean? Like weird effects and all that. And he was super into it. So it just grew from there. And then the album, you know, like most of the album got leaked because somebody hacked his Gmail account or the a and Gmail account. And that kind of like killed the momentum at that point. Yeah, it was insane. Sucks. So like a lot of the records that I had worked on had gotten, they were like all over the internet. That's when like, you know, all the blogs had taken over hip hop at that point. So it was like every day I was like, how did this leak? It was like a leak every day. But, you know, we just kept working, literally, you know, and I got so many gems from Dre. It's crazy. I have a whole interview. I never put it up, but I did an interview with him in Vegas where I talked to him about like his creative process, like what he does when he gets beat blocked, like just stuff that we don't really hear from him. You know what I mean? And one day I'm definitely going to put it up. The audio is terrible, but we need that. So we need that. <laughs> um, and he just let me do it. I was like, can I interview you? He's like, yeah, sure. So one day I'm definitely gonna, I gotta put that up. I feel like every creative needs to hear what he's saying. He's at the mountaintop, literally, for me. Absolutely, so. I mean, if you can release that, because I think that's something yeah. that the community totally needs and yeah. would love. So you mentioned that you were using the ASR-10. The ASR-10, for anyone who doesn't know, it's a classic sampler. I think it came out in the early 90s. It's made by Insonic. I've never actually used it, but from what I've heard, it's actually a super punchy, sounding sampler yeah. how would you compare it to something like reason or something like ableton in terms of workflow and also sound quality i mean you know the asr10 was like a workstation i mean the only thing is like you had to like load up your sound so like if you wanted to load up a grand piano you had to pull out your floppies and you know what i mean and you had to like load it up at first you had like limited sample time so you had to like add more ram to like have more sampling time but I mean, it's analog. So that's where the punch comes from. It's the analog, you know, the output is crazy. So like, if you think of like Timberland, Kanye, Pharrell, like they're all ASR guys, you know what I mean? I think even Knotts was an ASR guy, if I'm not mistaken. Jake One, I'm trying to think of who else. I'm, I'm forgetting some people, but you know, these are all ASR guys. Like for hip hop, I mean, it's incredible because it has its own built-in effects. You can record into it. I felt like I was pretty good on the ASR. But like when I heard like Knotts and Jake One or, you know, even Kanye or whoever, I was like, man, like I got to find, <laughs> I got to find another way to like, you know, to step it up. And like, that's when I got on Reason and Reason like kind of changed my life at that point. But it's just a little bit fatter. It's like a more robust sound. When you dig into the effects, like the effects are incredible. So you can put like effects on your kicks, on your snares. It just has like a roundness that like you're not going to get from any DAW, in my opinion. But, you know, you're limited because, like, when I was working on G-Unit, I made um, Lay You Down on my ASR-10. But, you know, back then, we used to print the CD. Literally had to, like, it was like a performance. Like, I was filtering synths and all that kind of oh. stuff live. So when it came down to tracking it, I couldn't recreate it. It was just, like, there wasn't automation and stuff like that. At that point, it was just, like, they had to just use the two-track because I would try to, like, literally duplicate what I did on that CD, and it just wouldn't work. Yo, thank you, man. Thank you so much for coming through, and glad we got to kick it and chat for a bit. Man, just thank you for being here. Super inspiration to the producer community. Anytime, anytime. Thank you, man. Keep inspiring everybody. Like, you inspire me all the time, so. Oh, appreciate you, man. You, know, you inspire so many people. So I appreciate even just being on here, for real. No doubt. All right, man, let's talk more nerdy <laughs> soon. Yeah, all right. All right, <laughs> all right man. peace, bro. All right, brother, peace.